Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. So I'll go past the pole and then I'll do a sharp turn down the hill. Just going to swing wide and then come round. There we go. Hitting the road again. Hi, I'm Lavi. And I'm Ollie. And this is our hero, Bumblebee. Together, we are attempting a Guinness World Record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by, by motorcycle. motorcycle. Join us for season three here in South America. Good morning world, welcome back to the channel. It's day number 342 on our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. We're here in the capital of Ecuador, Quito, and there's an amazing massive cathedral right in front of us. <laughs> it looks absolutely stunning. Yeah, wow, what a beautiful cathedral. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's like um, sort of a gothic style. It's a bit like the one in Cologne, hey? Yeah. The historic center of Quito is, is famous for being just so well preserved and such like an amazing example of like colonial architecture and mixing with Moorish styles and also indigenous styles. But yeah, Quito is a pretty cool place. Yeah, unfortunately we couldn't spend too much, <laughs> too much time here. Yeah, because we have an important mission today and that is to cross the border with Colombia. So let me show you guys the route for today. So we are here in the capital and today we're going to be heading on this road through Cayambe up through Ibarra and up to the border of Colombia, which is just past El Angel, somewhere around here. The reason for us going to cross the border today is because we have a plan to cross the Darien Gap. Now, there are basically two ways to cross the Darien Gap. You can either ship the bike with a container or you can fly the bike. There used to be a lot of options with like little boats and ferries as people have seen on Itchy Boots' channel, but this option is no longer available. We've had good word from multiple people who have tried that same technique, loading the bike onto a boat, you know, a few days nice trip through the San Blas Islands and then you're in Panama. But we contacted some operators and basically everybody said to us, this is not happening anymore. The government has cracked down on this type of Darien Gap crossing and it's no longer available. So that leaves us with the option of a container or flying. Now, you know what happened the last time we put Bumblebee in a container. It took three months before we could see her again. It was a nightmare, cost a fortune. So we are not doing that again. Yeah, we are still traumatized from this experience. Absolutely. <laughs> so that leaves us with flying the bike. Now, luckily there is an awesome company called Cargo Rider and they will fly your bike from Bogota in Colombia to Panama City. Literally, you drop off the bike, a couple of days later, it's ready to collect. It's like super easy, super straightforward and it only costs 1250 US dollars which is not too bad considering we paid 5000 US dollars for our container shipping yeah I'm really really happy with this option actually and we are in contact now with Veronica and we wrote her this morning actually a message and saying to her we will be in Bogota in like four days and she said no worries but this is the reason we have a bit of a time constraint because basically they only accept bikes on Thursday morning every week and then those bikes will be flown on the Saturday of that same week so basically unless we want to wait a whole nother week we need to reach Bogota by Thursday morning so it's currently Friday today so our mission is including today to have five rides to reach Bogota that'll get us to Bogota on Tuesday night and then Wednesday we get our tire changed fingers crossed if we manage to get that organized <laughs> and then Thursday morning Bumblebee is ready to be shipped and we will be heading over to Panama we just have our morning mission at the moment to try to get out of Quito because although this isn't the largest city in Ecuador it's pretty close there are two million people living here so yeah it's uh it's still a big place yeah and the traffic is quite tricky because it's uh, very hilly here as well 
and it's a very long city uh, if you see on the map it's like it's really spread over like uh, kilometers you know we'll hopefully find our way out so today our mission is to try to cross the border to Colombia and reach the town of Ipales which is basically the first uh, major town over the other side of the border yes our navigation says it will take us four hours and 50 minutes it's already 9 30 so better hit the road let's go Oh yes, on our way out of the city and wow, it looks like we were quite up high in Quito because now we're just descending down into this massive valley ahead. It's a beautiful day today, sunshine, 19 degrees, can't complain. Yeah, it's like Ecuador started us off on a bad foot. Welcome to Ecuador! Oh yeah, yeah, and then like made up for it towards the end yeah absolutely kind of like, oh sorry guys here's a couple of days of sunshine to finish your trip yes thanks ecuador i just realized as well that we will cross the equator today my love no way yeah must be no no you're totally right yeah actually we might need to look that up yeah we should be passing the equator like really really soon yeah because it's supposed to be just north of quito yeah exactly and that's like literally where we are now yeah Oh no. Do you think we've already passed it? I don't know. So we don't have any signal right now to check 100%, but we think that the equator, or at least some sort of mark of the equator, is coming up in the town of Cayambe. So we're just going to continue on ahead and see if we can find it. I got some internet and I just found out that there's actually a solar uh, clock which we're gonna go now and there apparently um, it's the zero zero latitude so there is actually the point where the equator is directly it's about 17 minutes from here now it's a little bit of a detour but it's a worthwhile detour so we will go there now and check that out exciting can we appreciate this stunning surroundings here <laughs> Yeah, it's really not what I expected of the <laughs> equator, but it's beautiful. <laughs> yes, it's absolutely crazy. If you had asked me before, I would have said I'd, I'm 100% sure that it would be rainforest at the equator. Yeah, somewhere deep in the jungle, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's you know, when you have the equator in your mind, that's what you think, right? <laughs> yes, I think my whole life is a lie. <laughs> Look at it. So, 0.3 miles. We will reach the middle of the world. I'm ready for it. Dun, 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 Oh, here we go, look. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Linea Equinocial Equator. This way. Amazing. So is that the thing? Yeah, I think so. I okay, think you so have to turn here to the left in a minute. Turn here to the left. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's a big sign here. Bienvenidos la mitad del mundo. All right, yeah, let's go over to the sign. Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> Amazing. When we adopted the name Ecuador, it was on 1830, on the 19th centuries. And so the name of the country, Ecuador, is just uh, because the equator is here. Yeah, exactly. Ecuador means equator, equator means Ecuador. It is part of the, our identity. It has to be exposed with honesty and respect. Do you think this is why the Inca, why they made a city here? Do you think it's related to the fact that it's very, very close to the equator? Uh, yes, but for example, the, the local towns that they lived here before the Incas came, they established different archaeological sites and one of these temples is exactly on the equator. Wow. Made it five centuries before the Incas came. Oh wow, okay. This is even close to Quito City in San Antonio de Pichincha town. So clever, hey? <laughs> so clever. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. That's why for us it's very important to try to share all yes. this information when the people come because it's part of the, our history. Yeah. And it's interesting sharing all this knowledge as well. Twice the year, 21st of March and September 23rd, we have the sun comes from the east. So, like that. Okay. This little tooth is the same one as you can see there. The tower gives us a shot in the morning to the west, straight along the equator. 
so exactly directly west ex yes okay today we are not on the equinox because it is on 21st of march and 23rd of september but it's interesting because just twice the year you are able to observe the shadow by this tower is straight along the equator wow and then using the shadow we can see different hours by mm -hmm. these lines okay mm -hmm. 8 9 10 11 12 but at noon 12 uh -huh. there's no shadows because the sun is going to be directly yeah. above oh wow it's perpendicular that's why it's completely shining into this tower and uh -huh. the shadows disappear oh magical just for two or three minutes wow yeah but in the afternoon the sun is setting in the west yes and the shadow goes to the other okay. side give us one two three four five p.m yes april mm -hmm. may june yes. we have the sun over the tropic of cancer yes Mm -hmm. That's why it's summer for the north, yeah. winter for the south. Uh -huh. The Tropic of Cancer line is over Cuba, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, a lot of countries. We rode through it in uh, Morocco. Morocco, yes, it is. After June, July, August, September, November, October, November, December, we have the sun over the Tropic of Capricorn. That's why it's summer for the south, winter for the north. You are in the northern hemisphere, Germany and yes. United Kingdom. You are around or between latitudes 40, 50 degrees, 55 degrees. That's why for you, most part of the time, the sun is always to the south. Uh, like that. That's why everybody has their garden in England, always facing the south. south. But in the southern hemisphere, opposite. Yes. And here, you can't put your garden. <laughs> yeah, you have you no... You can put on both sides. Yeah, both sides. Both sides. East, west, north, south. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. That's interesting. If we place that north pole ah uh, yeah it's like six months dark yeah or from the south pole it's meant to like six months dark so here is equal days equal nights yes. all the year all year, year. yeah it doesn't matter if we are on solstice or equinoxes we can feel the same time 12 hours for the day 12 hours for the night wow we have the sunrise 6 a.m and at 6 p.m that's why here there's no seasons there's no seasons it's a little bit boring but <laughs> is explaining also why this region is one of the most biodiversities much more numbers of plants and animals so the plants are developed in photosynthesis 100 percent all year round wow but in this moment we are not still on the yes. equator line mm -hmm. because it's there yes we are here one second out in the south which is equal 30 meters if you want to prove you can use the, the smartphones or smartwatches or gps's to see the coordinate zero zero one second south I look at that one second south oh yeah. cool but in this moment we are keep walking that way where there you are going to observe zero 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 all oh. cool okay. Okay. let's do it let's yes. make our way to the equator that's why this is the most accurate spot in the history of ecuador and also in all the way around most part of the monuments in the other places around are not exactly in the equator okay they're just very close but yeah. not exactly but yeah. this is like exactly the line. Yes, here is the only and the unique place in the world where the people can find it zero degrees, zero minutes, zero seconds with one millimeter precision. Crazy. Look at <laughs> that. Zero, 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 zero. Wow. Zero minutes, zero seconds, and that's the line. Look at this. Cayambe, latitude zero, 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 Ecuador. Yes. Wow. After this line, it's southern hemisphere okay there and northern hemisphere wow for us this line is the line that it makes just one single word joins together it's the line of the union balance and equilibrium it's not a line that most part of the people think it's the line which is divided here into hemispheres yes it's the line of the union wow yeah. cool so the mosaic as you can see uh -huh. inside is the same symbol that you must find all over the world mm -hmm. okay if you go to peru mexico egypt you can find the same symbol all over the world it came from the astronomical observations by the local people for thousands of years ago for the last 29 years by this organization we discovered more than 250 different pre-inca archaeological sites wow. Wow inside of this macro region okay and each one is on a specific point yes. relating to the equinox or the solstice yeah it's on the 
and relationship of this kind of symbol of the star with eight points. Okay. That's why the center one is Katekija. But if you are in Katekija Hill in June 21st, you will observe the sunrise there. But the sun comes aligned with the pyramids of Kochaski, June 21st. And six months later, for another solstice, uh -huh. you have the sunrise on top of this archaeological sites, okay. which is called Pampa Marca. Ah. This is the way how they figured it out. This Amazing. The how these people choose a specific point on the horizon where they were observed where the sun rises and sets. And this is the way how they did all these places with mathematical precision. Wow. Yeah. Look, look, look. I'm in the north. I'm in the south. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing! Welcome, Welcome to, to the equator! <laughs> Different hemispheres joined by us. Yeah, this is some kind of goosebumps place. When the guide is explaining everything about the sun, it's just like... <sighs> magical. Magical. Okay, so it's 12 o'clock now. So that sun is shining all the way down this tube and if it was on the equinox then this circle would be perfectly inside this circle here. You know, I get goosebumps. I nearly can cry because it's so... You don't really experience something like this anywhere in the world, just here. And whilst we're here in the middle of the world, I have another important announcement and that is that we have just hit 22,000 miles on the road! Woo! Wow, that was a magical place. I'm so happy that we went there. And as well, it was like five US dollar per person. It was the best five dollars spent in a long time. Like they had so much knowledge that explained so many things. It was so worthwhile going, like I loved it. Yeah, I mean, they really, you know, showed us the importance of what it means to be on the equator. You know, the history and sort of how the ancient cultures uh, built temples on the hills. And it's just, yeah, it's amazing just to see the wider context and just to see what it really means to be on the equator. It's amazing. Definitely well worth taking a detour to go there. But now we have to make some distance. Oh, yes. We are still heading to the Colombian border and oh my god it says now we will arrive there at like 4 20 so it doesn't give us a huge amount of time but yeah we have to push on now yeah i mean we've got probably by the time we arrive we'll have only about two hours until sunset so we are really pushing it but yeah i guess we've just got to try and make some distance now yeah let's hurry up Many unbearable hours later. So it's currently three o'clock and we've reattached our media mod because it stopped raining. Woo! The sun is back. Yeah, let's dry off a little bit, eh? Yes. We've still got an hour and a half riding to get us to the border. Uh, at the moment, it's estimating that we'll get there at half past four. But hopefully it will be quite smooth at the border and we will enter Colombia. Yeah, we've actually... Um, enlisted the help of Veronica helping us out with the paperwork to get our temporary import permit for Colombia. Now normally we would just arrive at the border and just you know do whatever we need to do but I know to cross the border into Colombia with the motorcycle we have to do some stuff online and we tried having a look at the website and it's just impossible for us to make sense of any of it. Yeah, everything was in Spanish and even the English translation. Like, we, we didn't really get what, what's going on there, so... So yes. I think Veronica says she'll do all the paperwork for us and email it over. Yeah. So um, that just makes it much smoother and quicker when we do get to the border to get everything sorted because we won't have a lot of time. It's literally going to be two hours to sunset. Whoa, look at this for a bend. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's been a really hilly ride 
winding our way around all these crazy crazy bends yeah you can't really go very fast here in ecuador even though the, the distances aren't great it still takes you a lifetime <laughs> to go around here <laughs> Look at that! There we go. Gracias por visitar la República del Ecuador. Oh, do we have to do something here, my love? What do you mean? L look, migrations there. Or do we have to do something just here on this side? So we went, apparently, the guy said that we went straight past uh, migration for Ecuador and we should have actually stamped ourselves out and given back our temporary import permit for Ecuador here. So I've done my passport stamp out and Levy is doing hers now and I'm just moving Bumblebee. Customs is right there as well, so it's pretty easy. I think they might want to have a look at the bike. So I'm just going to bring it round. Okay, here we go. Five minutes later. Beautiful, that was super easy. So we just gave back the temporary import permit at that little window there. And that was it, it was easy. It looks like a busy border. <laughs> but actually getting out of Ecuador there, that was really quick. That was I mean, really quick. That took us about 10 minutes. Yeah. So now, <laughs> again, going back across the bridge. Bienvenidos, Colombia. Whee! I'll go do my migration, get the passport stamped in. You do the same. Yes. And then we're ready to get our temporary import permit for Bumblebee. Yes. We stepped in. So now we've sent over everything to Veronica and we're just waiting for her to upload and get everything ready for us. Then I'm going to go over to customs and hopefully everything should be sorted. What time is it now? It's like five o'clock it's looking okay yeah but it's still super busy here like people like standing around here everywhere I don't know what they're doing but otherwise the uh, process was quite quick and yeah welcome to Colombia one more thing to do and we're in all right customs is done we've got our temporary import permit I think that's it I think we're good to go hey yeah let's just see if they stop us yeah. doesn't look like it <laughs> Perfect. Nobody stopped us. We are through. Welcome to Colombia. Uh, amazing. And it's not dark yet, which is amazing. It is currently 5.50, so we are very close to sunset. But luckily, it's only a 10 minute ride to get to the town of Ipales. And there we have an accommodation in mind. So we should be all gravy. Yes. Awesome! Mission complete! <laughs> Bumblebee gets a deluxe place tonight, a very nice room, which looks almost like the flat from the owners here. I feel a little bit bad because I think Bumblebee's a little bit dirty, but muchas <laughs> gracias. This is the owner and the hotel looks really cool. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias, gracias. Muchas gracias. So this is our room here and it's super amazing because the room costs us just nine pounds which is uh, a new record I think but for some reason they always put us like uh, on the third floor or fourth floor and they don't have an elevator so we're always carrying all our stuff to the last last room in the whole hotel. The furthest you can walk in the entire hotel yes. and this box is really heavy so... 
We made it! Happy the life! Whee! Yeah, so we're here in the square in the center of Ipales. There's this really massive cool church behind us as well. We made it to Colombia. We are here. Mission accomplished. I'm super happy to be here to discover a new country, to see something new. It's always super amazing. But our first priority is to find something to eat. So we're going to have a look around the square and see what we can find. And that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below, and we will see you next time. I think we've gone a little overboard. <laughs> this is what riding all day does to you. You need a lot of pizza. <laughs> that is massive. Look, my hand. Whoa. Bon appetit.